Greetings and welcome back to Factorio. We have just completed a major hurdle in getting our supply depot up and running. Our next big goal is to get into oil and fully enter into the mid game. To do that, we're going to have to expand and do some more fighting. And I want to have our military options fully up to date before we go ahead and do that. We have cleared out the jumpstart factory here. Only steel left there. And this is a bit of a cathartic turning point when you can really take this down and it's no longer needed. I've gotten rid of some mining drills that were no longer useful, about a half dozen of those, etc. Threw up a little bit more solar panels for power. And there's a lot of material that comes out of that, but using the vehicle's inventory really helps move it around where it needs to go. Took about one and a half loads of this and we put coal, iron ore, copper ore into the smelters and a lot of the iron and copper plates went into the gear wheels and the electronic circuits that we're making. All of those machines can take on material. I've got a few items stored here. Just science packs, turrets, and furnaces. And then down here, I do have a couple chests moving stone in here, stone bricks in here. But it's not too difficult. It takes some time to get everything situated. But I think it's very useful to just gather up all your resources, organize them, get them where they need to be, and then we can really move on in a good fashion. Red automation science is really simplicity itself. We've just got a single belt coming in, copper and iron gear wheels, assemblers, the packs will go out. And each of these is capable, once we get to the assembler threes, of 15 science a minute. So two of them is 30, and we have enough space here to add them up to get over 100. Here is our green logistic science paired with it, and we only ever really need one of these assemblers. The inserters, one assembler, top level, can produce enough inserters for 150 science a minute and 300 from a transport belt one. So that's never going to be a problem. And I also should note that one side of a transport belt, a yellow transport belt, can carry enough for 450 science a minute, way more than we're ever going to want. So for the volumes of science packs we're going to be making, it's never a need to have more than one half of a yellow belt. Now, the green ones do run a little bit slower each, so I've got three of them here to make sure we can keep up with the capacity we're looking for. Here is our black or gray, whatever you want to call it, military science setup. And this is a little bit more involved. Each assembler is going to produce two at a time, but they produce it at half the speed that our red automation science goes. So still, two assemblers with five more to upgrade later is gonna work just fine. Now the grenades actually produce slightly faster than they're needed here, but they're close enough, eight seconds to 10 seconds, that doing direct insertion makes sense to me. So we've got our coal and our iron there. And then down here, we are producing our ammunition. Now, some players like, I know Nilaus is a big proponent of this, to build extra ammunition, extra grenades, etc. in the military science area and just use that as your military supply. But for me, I like to have all that stuff in the depot because that's supposed to be, in my conceptualization of it, a one-stop area. I don't want to go to a bunch of different areas, as I've mentioned, to grab supplies. So there are different ways that you can go about this. There are many different designs for this. And of course, if you're playing like many players do with enemies off, you don't even need this at all. But each of these assemblers for the piercing ammo is going to produce enough for 50 science a minute. So this is already more than we need. And actually these are underworked by supplying even two of these. These could supply three of the piercing ammo assemblers. So those are totally fine. And the walls are another thing that can produce super fast and supply hundreds of science a minute. So none of that is an issue. And then we're matching it up with the grenades, and out it goes this way. And here's the payoff, our permanent lab setup. I'm not a big fan of daisy chaining, as I mentioned before. You can get away with it, as long as you don't go too deep with them and overtax your inserters with all the different types of science packs you're going to have coming in. But we are going to need six different ones coming, and seven if you use the post-game space science. So two belts on either side is plenty, and then... Only 10 labs, the same amount that I started the Jumpstart Factory with. But actually, this should be plenty. By the time we get to the end of the game, with all of our upgrades to lab speed and the other additions we're going to be making here, 
We're going to be getting over three science a minute out of each lab, 32 out of the entire row. And so that's going to meet our needs. And of course, again, if we want more, then we simply extend it further down this way and everything is totally fine there. By the way, this is what I use the shoulder for a lot. Good demonstration of it here. We've simply got the red and green science coming out here together and jumping over everything. This way they're not taking up more space on the bus and making me expand that. They're just taking a nice little journey over here and barely a walk around the block for our military science, which just slides in this way. And then the ones we build further up on the bus will come in here. So all of that is ready to go. Now, what are we gonna use it for? Well, as I've mentioned before, most of the military science before you get oil, we can't really use that much, but we do want to go in and get our first combat robot, the Defender. And you can see down below, 45 second lifetime. It has limited combat capability, but it does help. And of course, any additional distractions for the enemy or ways to attack them and cause more damage are going to be helpful to us. So we'll begin with that. And then we can start with four of these available that we can use at any given time. And then we can increase that count with a couple of upgrades. So we'll want to get those. We've got explosive upgrades that we can get for our grenades. And then of course, for our regular ammunition, we can also add on a couple more tiers of upgrades there as well. So those are what I'm gonna focus on first as we go forth and expand and clear out some more of the Navians. And then we will get into the various items here that actually require oil.